What's up guys? I'm gonna tell you the story about me purchasing and driving my bus home for the first time. Backstory on how I found my bus. I've been in, involved in and researching the schoolie community for like the past three years. And the plan was in 2019 to purchase a school bus and convert it. And in 2020, go out with it and take some trips. I always write my goals down every year make a board out of them and I look at it every day. This was on the top of my goals this year. Halfway through the year, I still hadn't found a bus. I still hadn't found a place to convert the bus. That was the main thing. So after talking with my wife, she pretty much convinced me to just buy a converted bus already. I wasn't really with that at first, but then I decided that's probably the best thing to do. So I started searching on the internet to find a bus in my price range and I found one and it was in Cleveland, Ohio. So also a little backstory on the bus itself. It's a 1987 Thomas, like coach city bus, right? So it's not a schoolie, but hey, it's a converted bus. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Somebody commented on his ad when he was selling the bus and it was the original owner of the bus that sold it to the person I'm buying it from. And this guy says, I bought this bus in 1987 for the Durham Striders track team. And we've used this bus with no problems up until 2017 when you bought it. And he just said, I love what you did with it. I never imagined it would look like this. Congratulations, right? So, this guy bought it in Durham, North Carolina. I live in Durham, North Carolina. So in my head, I'm like, I'm bringing her back to where she came from, right? Crazy. Well, I mean, crazy coincidence that I live in Durham and the bus was originally bought from Durham and converted. So I hit him up and I was just like, it's meant to be for me to bring the bus back to Durham where it was originally purchased at. So when I did that, he told me that the bus was pending a sale and he would let me know if anything changes. So I continued my search for weeks trying to find the right bus. Went through a couple out of my price range, some in my price range that just wasn't really what I was looking for. About a month later, the guy that I hit up about the 87 Thomas bus hit me back and said, hey, the sale didn't go through. The bus is still available if you would like to come get it. So I said, I'm on it. July 9th, I flew up to Cleveland. Individual reading light controls are overhead. Thank you for your attention and enjoy your flight. Just landed in Cleveland. About to meet with Greg to go pick up this bus to see what's going on. The guy Greg that sold me the vehicle picked me up from the airport, took me there to the bus, showed me how everything works. This is my bus, y'all. About to buy this bad boy. About to go get it checked out with a mechanic real quick to make sure everything's good. But other than that, he just showed me everything. Everything looks good inside. And then after we were done with that, we took it over to a mechanic. The mechanic looked it over said, hey, everything checks out. I did all of these checks. Everything's good to go. It's worth the purchase, right? So, I hit the road. Check it out. Bought the bus. I'm on the bus. I'm right outside of Cleveland, Ohio. At a truck stop. I just filled up with some diesel. My first time ever filling up with diesel. It was definitely a pain in the A. But, um... We'll get used to it. So here's a quick tour of the bus. TV up here, remote, front door, driver's seat area. Two front couches. Kitchen area. AC. Four bunk beds. Refrigerator, microwave, little toaster oven. Bathroom, shower's not done yet, it needs to be tiled up. Toilet, don't really like that, we'll fix that. And here's the 
here's the back bedroom area. TV back here. AC. Closet space. More closet space. And that's just the fan that comes down to cool it off. So yeah. This is the bus, yo. Living that bus life. You heard? Look at that. There's a slowdown on I-77. Driving this junk, son. Delay. You can avoid it by going via Johnny, Ohio no joke. South, which saves four. Take the interchange on the right. We pulled this off, baby. We pulled it off. You hear me? Fan blowing, music blasting. I don't care if you can hear me or not. We made it. We made it on the bus. Woo! I'm excited, yo. This is the start of the journey. Y'all don't even understand. This is like three years worth of planning for this. I had to cut the music so I can talk to y'all for real, for real. This is like three years worth of planning. We were supposed to build a bus first, but we didn't end up doing that. We bought one. Already converted. It's done. It's completed. I'm just going to update it to my liking. And we good money. This all we need. We out here. We getting ready to live this bus life. I'm living my bus life. Check it out. Family adventure. Enjoy the little things. Gotta be out here enjoying your life, my peoples. I got a bus. I'm about to be out here. You heard? Check this out. Got a little bit of cobwebs up there. They need to be cleaned out. Prone to wander. But yeah. Yo, I'm excited, man. We out here. We at a bus stop. I just filled up the diesel fuel. It's time to head back to NC so the fam can see the bus. And then it's about to be wifey's birthday on Friday. We're going to try to head down to Charleston, South Carolina and catch up with my mom and dad who are already down there. So let's get it going. Yeah! Yo. I'm living my bus life. Yo, I've been singing the whole way home, yo. We on now. Bus life. Yeah! I had no problems with it. I went, I drove all the way through the night till about midnight. I stopped and slept in a Walmart parking lot. All right, yo. I know you can't see me because it's dark, but, uh, I drove for a couple hours. I'm in West Virginia, pulled over at a Walmart, went inside, got a couple drinks and some pillows. Now I'm about to lay it down for a few hours before I hit the road again. But yeah, first night I bought the bus, spending the night in the bus, the first day I got it. So can't beat that. Um, yeah, just bought some pillows. I don't have no blanket, no sheets or nothing like that, but uh, should be good enough. My nose is stopped up, man. I hope that doesn't mean I'm getting sick. But uh, either way, I'm just trying to get some sleep. Just wanted to update. I know it's dark. Peace. I was going through Charleston, West Virginia. Must say, I've never been to Charleston. I'm getting it as I've already been from downtown. But Charleston is a beautiful city. My God, I have to come back here. This joint is nice, man. There was a dude out there with a boat, water skiing on the water. I'm just riding down the riverside right now. But uh, I wish I would've had the camera out earlier. But yeah, this is a super nice city. So, Charleston, I will be back. Charleston, I will be back. We've got beautiful bridges, nice buildings. Super nice, man. Look at this. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful West Virginia. <laughs> I did not realize the GPS on my phone was set to avoid toll roads. So it got me off the highway, started taking me through the city into some very remote rural roads and as i'm driving up through these roads i'm thinking if it gets any more 
remote like this, I'm going to be in trouble. So here I am. I get to a road and a turn. I'm going up a mountain and the turn is like almost completely 180. If you ever been on a mountain road and you know them turns go like this. The bus, it took me a while. Let's put it that way. It took me a while to make this turn. I had cars waiting behind me, in front of me. I was doing back and forth. I finally made it up the turn. As soon as I got around the turn, check engine light came on. Yeah, so this is me. That stop engine light came on. Then my engine just stopped right out here in the middle of the mountains in West Virginia. With like... So yeah, this is me on a mountain road in the middle of nowhere. Look at this mountain range here. Stranded. No cell phone service. Nothing. Crazy. On a curve where it's hard to see cars coming from both sides. They were flying around both sides. So I came out and was like directing traffic for a little while. And I figured my engine was overheat because I climbed up the mountain. So I stopped, let it cool off. It cooled off. I was able to start it back up. I drove for another half a mile and it did it again. This time I was able to pull off the, the road where I wasn't in people's way. I went to the back and just took a nap for an hour. Living that bus life. Stranded in the West Virginia mountains. Waiting for the engine to cool off. This is my view from the seat. Got my legs kicked up. I mean, what can you do? I was able to get it off the little curve I was at. Off the road. Now I'm just waiting for it to cool down. What else can I do? You know what I'm saying? I just have to wait. I have no service, so I have no choice but to play solitaire on my phone. I know people are probably trying to call me, worried about me, but what can I do? I can't do anything about it because I don't have no service. I can't tell nobody nothing. This sucks, man, but this too shall pass. So, I wake up. The engines cooled off, started it up, drove another half a mile. It happened again. Engine light came on. So I pulled off the side of the road. I was sitting out there maybe 30 minutes or so. And a guy pulls up on me. His name is Bootleg. They call him Bo for short. And he is a hillbilly from heaven. That's what I call him. Because he pulled up on me. And he said, do you need help? And I was like, yeah, I do. And he was like, I see you don't know what you're doing. Because at the time I had the, the engine open and I was pouring water on the engine trying to cool it off. So he said, yeah, you don't know what you're doing. I could tell. And I said, I really don't. He was like, well, if you need water for the radiator, I could take you into town. You're probably going to need like 15 to 20 gallons to put water in there to cool it off. And I was like, well, I mean, if that's what you think it is. So he had pulled out a couple of tools before we left and uh, was tinkering around with a couple of things. And ultimately, he drove me down the mountain about 20, 25 minutes into town. I went to a family dollar, bought some gallons of water, took me back up to the bus, filled the radiator up. And as soon as I filled it with the first gallon, it was full. So we was like... That's not the problem because it's filled with water and antifreeze. So that's, it's not the, the problem of overheating. That's not the problem. So on the way down to the town, he didn't realize he had opened his truck bed and got his tools and left the truck bed down. So he lost some tools on the way down the mountain. It was falling out the back of his truck. And I felt bad about that because I'm like, here's this guy stopping to help me and he's losing tools out the back of his truck on accident. As we're riding back up the mountain, 
we're looking for his tools don't find any tools he thinks somebody might have stopped and grabbed him or whatever so you know i'm already feeling bad about my bus now i'm feeling bad about this guy that's helping me and he's losing tools out the back of his truck so we get back fill the water up and the water is not the problem so he says crank the engine up as soon as i crank the engine up he said stop 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 he said your fan is sparking it's hitting against the shroud so I go back there and I feel the fan and I see what he's talking about. It's like stuck against the shroud. So in hindsight, going up around that mountain turn, I think I must have somehow shifted the engine. Some kind of way I bent the shroud to where it was touching the fan and it was sparking as it was spinning and it was starting to tear the fan up a little bit. Like it was jagged edges on the fan. So we're sitting there looking at it and he's like, Man, the only thing I could see you do is take off this little shroud circle that's around it that it's grinding up against. And in order to do that, you're going to need something to, to grind it off with. So, he takes me back into town to an O'Reilly's Auto Parts. We buy an angle grinder. And I was able to buy him some tools to replace his tools because I felt bad about that. He was appreciative. He didn't ask for it, but... I figured it was the least I can do for him stopping to help me, right? We get back up to the bus. I'm just filming. If you hear me talking, I'm just going to talk about what's going on. So basically, the fan is rubbing up against this part right here underneath here. So we're going to try to grind these rivets off and take this part off. So we got a angle grinder and we're going to try to get her done. finally get it off all right guys after about two hours of banging and grinding and everything else we finally got that ring off it was right here and it was blocking the fan from moving so we're hoping now that we'll be good we'll see you in a minute Whew. and guess what start the bus up the fan turns, no more problems. You know, he was, he's the hillbilly from heaven. I mean, if you, if he would have never stopped and helped me, it probably would have been about $1,000 in towing to get it off the mountain and down to a mechanic. It probably would have been about $1,000 repair. And I would have just been super pissed off that I just bought the bus and I'm already putting two grand into it, right? I'm a dirty man. I've been working on the bus. All day, I'm a dirty man. Full update. I was stopped on a road, a rural road, mountain road, near Oak Hill, West Virginia. The car, the bus, at the time, I thought was overheating. It was not overheating. The fan on the radiator was chopping. The metal piece that wraps around the fan so this nice guy man super nice guy named Bo short for bootleg shout out to bootleg he's a guardian angel he came and saved my life on a mountain in West Virginia he spent five hours with me going back and forth to town picking up tools and everything we needed we ended up getting an angle grinder and we grinded that piece off of there that was grinding on the fan, making it look like it was overheating. Once we did that, no problems at all. He followed me into town, made sure I was straight till I got to the highway. I haven't had no issues since. The fan is turning fine in the back. So I've made it down here to Virginia. I'm at a Flying J getting ready to gas up right now. Well, I am gassing up while I'm in, inside, it's raining. 
So I'm giving this update while I'm at the uh, gas station. Yeah, pretty uh, wild experience for my first time in a bus, I must say. I will never forget it. But it was a great learning experience because I was all up in my engine, learning where stuff was at, learning how it works, all that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, what can we do? We're still here. We're still rolling. So, yeah, I know Bo bootleg will probably never see this in his life although he did tell me he gets on youtube once in a while and does youtube university to learn how to fix things so bo if you ever come across this i just want you to know that i appreciate you so much sir so much man he just asked me to pay it forward he said somebody helped him in the past and he was paying it forward so now it's my time to pay it forward and that's what i'm gonna do as soon as somebody needs some help i'm gonna help I have no choice because this guy looked out for me tremendously. I was stranded on that mountain for like six, seven hours. And for five of it, he was with me, helping me fix the bus. So, thank you, Bo. Thank you, God. Everything should be good. We're getting ready to hit the road in a minute and head back home. I'm just pacing around the bus waiting for the gas to finish. And uh, soon after that, we're about three hours from the house. I'll update y'all when I make it home. All right, guys, I had a quarter tank and I just filled up. And there's the price for you, so you know. 51 gallons, $148.16. Bam! All right, made it home to NC. Parked at the grocery store up the street from the house. I'll try to leave the bus here tonight. I gotta go talk to the manager just because I don't have nowhere to park it tonight. But the kids are getting ready to come up here with Monty and see the bus for the first time. So that'll be cool to get their reaction. Hi. What's up, buddy? <laughs> I missed you guys. <laughs> That's our bus. You want to let them get out or? Yeah, I want them to come see it. You want to come see the bus? Yeah. This is our bus now. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna ride on it. We gotta ride on the this bus. Yeah, come on, come check it out. One, two, three, go! Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> come on, let's go check it out, buddy. Hey, hey, bug, bug. That's a bus. It's black and white. That's right, buddy. Come check it out, man. Let's see what it says on the front. It says Thomas. Thomas. You wanna walk up? Go ahead. Oh, Thomas. It's Thomas. It's a Thomas bus. Yeah, that's the Thomas bus. <laughs> this was inside. You like it? Yeah, I'll get it. A bus. A two bus. Hey, baby. That's a two bus. Let's look at the bus, baby. Come on. That's a two bus. That is my toothbrush, bud. Man, there's lots of bunk beds where we can go sleep. Yeah, I'm going to go sleep this bus. Yeah. That's so beautiful. It's beautiful? It's so beautiful. Thank you. Let's go to this bed. It got this bed. It got this bed. We need to sit there on the bus. Oh, pull it. We need to sit there on the bus. Oh, okay. The seat. That's right. That's where the driver's seat is at. To drive the bus. That's yeah. right, bud. It's the thing that drives the bus. Meow. I was driving the bus. I drove this bus a long way. Yeah, you drove this bus. I drove it from Cleveland, Ohio. Can you believe it? It's the seatbelt. It's the driver. Ari, you going to drive it? Okay, Ari, you drive it. I'm <laughs> You could drive it next, okay? Oh, yeah, uh, uh, the bus. 